Hello guys, welcome back to Let's Build a Kingdom number six, Docks and Slums. And if we give you a quick recap on what we've done so far, we've got the canals and the roads in place, the framework of our city. We've got the cathedral, the cathedral and the, ch the church style cathedral with the markets in front of it. And then next to that, we have the merchants district, a bunch of shops and a fountain and a blacksmith in there as well, next to the graveyard, the cemetery. And here, last episode, a big majestic mage tower. So this week, this episode, we're going to be hitting the docks. And here you see me clearing out the land, getting it to the right level so that everything's the same level and we don't have to come back and bother with uh, touching that up. And once that was all the same level, I mapped out uh, the rough shape of how we were going to have our docks. You see here we've got a kind of U shape that curves inside the uh, inside the back there. That's there because we're going to put a big ship inside that. We're going to craft ourselves a flagship for our naval fleet. Something big, something majestic, something that says we're a powerhouse, uh, this kingdom This kingdom is big, and, uh, and we'll defend it with our lives and our ships. There's two small, uh, small little outreaches from the docks there, for small little yachts and, and rowboats to dock up, and, uh, and once they were in place, it was time to, to map out the rough size of the, of the wooden docks. I put those posts there because uh, I realised to myself, well, what doesn't this, this kingdom have that every medieval fantasy kingdom should have? And it doesn't have a tavern, and that's the first thing that a sailor is going to be looking for. As soon as he comes off a cargo ship, a long overseas journey, he's been shipping spice for six months, he's been on the seas, man and boy, and uh, and he's come back and he wants to get wind up and have uh, a wee lass on his knee so that he can enjoy, enjoy, the, enjoy the evening with a mug of ale and, uh, and some female company. So that's what we built here. We built tavern as you can see we've gone one floor up and then we've built the canopy there and then once that was in place we built the other floor as well stone brick uh, because it's uh, it's kind of a wealthy building the uh, the tavern sees a lot of business and so we can afford to put his to put his uh, his building up with stone bricks we curved in a bit there at, at the top the second floor uh, has that slight indent to give it a bit of variation and to give the uh, the balcony on top a bit more uh, bit more life, perhaps put some tables up there eventually. And then cap the roof off with uh, with the old warhorse, our old friend, Red Nether Brick and Nether Brick Steps. Right, and then it was time to build our boat. And once I cleared out the trench, filled that with water, it was time to measure the gap that we left. It was even though, and uh, the gap I wanted had to be odd because the ship had to end in a one block point. You see, when you're um, when you're planning out these things, an odd number means an odd number of uh, of blocks at the base of, of a triangle means they will peak at one block to be symmetrical. If it's an even number, it'll peak in two. So with that in mind, I widened the uh, I widened the gap at the docks so that I could peek with one, and then uh, and then I started building the ship. I, w I wasn't happy with how long it was; it seemed stubby at first. So I had to keep going back and back and back until finally I had a length of ship that I could be happy with. And once that was uh, taken care of, it was time to head un underneath where you can't see me, bottoming out the boat, putting down the wood, making sure it can float. Next, it was time to open up uh, open up the uh, the sides with a few windows and a few a few uh, holes for us to poke our cannons out of, as well as those hatches you see at the top. A similar design that I used on the windows of the slums, which you'll see later, just to uh, an alternative to glass. And uh, in the heat of battle, you want something you can open, shutters that you can open to poke the cannons out. And then it was time to hit the cabin at the back, build up the back of that boat, so that I could uh, have a small office bedroom area for our captain, whoever he might be, to plan his sea battles, to navigate, put down charts, and uh, have a bit of food and drink, entertain guests, as well as catch some uh, some much needed shut eye. And then it was onto the sails. We have the main sail here, and uh, and the flag I'm doing is, is uh, the sail I'm doing is a simple simple design similar to the flag that we've got on on our castle, and then with the other sails of the boat. I stuck to the same theme, predominantly white, with a little bit of red splashed in, just to 
keep with the theme that the other cells had. Wasn't quite happy with where this cell, the main cell was, so I used world edit to copy and paste it, move it forward, and then I erased that other block. Put up the logs again at the back, behind that sail, the main mast. And then there was one more sail for us to do on the back here. Again, this was slightly smaller, so I couldn't quite have the same design that I used on the main sail. But I kept a similar red cross design on there, all the same. I put ladders up the main sail so that uh, our sailors could get to the crow's nest. And then I went around um, adding a bit of decoration here and there. Now, with the ship built, it was time to come on to the second part of what we were doing this episode, and that is the slums. Now, slums is probably the wrong idea for what we're doing, because when you, when you think of slums, you think of um, p poor people barely have enough coppers to scrape together to, for a loaf of bread, and that's not really what our kingdom is about. It's 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 a fantasy kingdom, and uh, and our king is a kind and benevolent ruler, so none of his people live in true poverty, but there's still going to be an area of the city that's slightly less desirable. The houses are a bit worse, and uh, it's not a nice place to live, but it's a cheap place to live, and it's, uh, it's uh, within the safety of the walls. Although, um, if there's any way you're ever going to be mugged in our kingdom, it's in the alleyways between these houses. And since we're going to have a thieves guild, there's going to be a little bit of crime in our city. So here, once I'd mapped down the foundations, in cobblestone, because um, the poor denizens of our kingdom cannot quite afford stone brick for their buildings, and there you see gravel for the alleyways in between, because they can't afford cobbles for the cobble, uh, for the uh, for the paths, they needed them all for the buildings. So, um, Gravel is, is the order of the day for the streets of the slums. And then I went around with the cobblestone, building up uh, to the first floor all of these slum style buildings. The key with uh, the slums is I wanted them to be uh, small, small rooms, small accommodations, but cramped in. And I think I achieved that with, uh, with the spacing here. I mapped out with wood here, the first floor, and these small buildings in the middle only went up one floor. However, the uh, the outer two rectangles went all the way up to a second floor. And here you see me cobblestoning those up and copying the roof from one side to the other, since they are identical uh, rectangles. And then I went around uh, giving these giving these smaller buildings in the middle wooden peaks. Now I considered a secret entrance in the slums to get into the Thieves Guild, since uh, Thieves Guilds traditionally operate out of the poorest parts of a city. It, uh, it seemed fitting to add uh, a way to get into the Thieves Guild from the slums, however I didn't do that. I wanted just to cram in a lot of cheap housing to give my citizens somewhere to stay. However, I may come back here and when we do build the Thieves Guild, there will quite possibly be a back entrance to a safe house, perhaps, hidden inside the slums where our thieves can uh, can lay low if the heat's on them and the city guard are out after, after their, their latest caper. So here again, I'm building, I'm building peaked roofs, much like all the other ones in our kingdom, however, with one distinct difference. They are not nether brick. These ones are wood because, uh, yeah, like I've said before, these are the poor people of our kingdom and they can't quite afford the luxury that the rest of the city lives in. I mean, they need their money for bread and the essentials, so all they've got is wooden peaked roofs, unfortunately. And then zipping around, adding the final few touch-ups. The windows uh, in the slums obviously don't have glass because, well, they can't afford glass. The few that do have ways to close their windows just have wooden shutters, the same way you'd see on the uh, on the side of the ship for where the cannons are. Now, I was 
missing one key thing on the docks, and that's a place for all the cargo ships that came in to place all their goods. So the docks needed warehouses. And that's what I said about here. I mapped out dark stone bricks, a small rectangle, smallish, for the warehouses, erased the bottom layer, toyed around with a few bricks before settling on wood as a floor, filled that in, and then got to work building the walls for our warehouses. Now this wasn't going to be one warehouse, it was going to be several, but they were going to be um, the same building. And the way I achieved that was by adding uh, three peaks on this building so that it gave the illusion of being three separate buildings but while still actually being the same building. It took me a while to get this right, measuring them out so that they were symmetrical, down the middle, evenly spaced. But then once I had, built up the sides with stone brick and then back to the nether brick for our peaked roofs. And to get the fronts looking a little bit a little bit nicer, I used uh, upside down stone steps to give these uh, to give these peaks a really zigzaggy feel. It stayed smooth and looked very neat, if I do say so myself. And once they were in place, it was time to widen the docks slightly and build the actual doors for these warehouses. Now I started small, but I kept expanding because I wanted them actually bigger and bigger and bigger before I was finally happy with what I had. I put it in wooden portcullis there and a couple of torches to light the front. I put shelves along the back and the sides because in a warehouse you need these kinds of things to store the, store the sacks of grain and flour, things that can't be on the floor in case the place floods, stuff that needs to be kept dry and then I put a few stone supports because the building was empty in the middle and uh, needed a few supports to keep the roof up. And once that was in place, I added a few chests around the side, a couple in the middle, and I added some explosives, some coal, and some redstone deposits to make the warehouse feel a little bit used, you know? To make it feel like sailors had actually been here and, and the kingdom was alive, and there were actually goods being stored in our warehouse instead of it being just some empty, empty building on the side of the river. Once I'd uh, gone around and added flowers to the side of the warehouse and plumbed in the road, I went to the back of the warehouse and opened up three holes to put in windows, which you'll see in a moment. And also, I wasn't quite happy with the front. The, uh, the grass here is going to be replaced with water, and as you can see, I pretted up the docks, the front of them a little bit, added fences, wooden steps and blocks, and deepened the river slightly to make it feel like proper docks. And there you have it. There's the ship, our flagship. We don't have a name for our ship yet, so what I would like you guys to do is in the comments post what you think one of our ships should be called. Think of ships from history, famous ships, ships to do with our kingdom, famous things from our kingdom that you might remember. Perhaps uh, anything, anything you like. Throw it in there and, uh, and we'll have a look at those ship names and perhaps give it a name next episode. But you see there, we've got the warehouse, the ship, the tavern and the slums all plumbed in. And, uh, and all looking fairly pretty. And that draws us to the end of this week's episode of Let's Build. So here is our kingdom with the ship, our flagship, the slums, the church, the mage tower, mage uh, merchant's district, marketplace, roads and canals. I'm not sure what we're going to be hitting next, but uh, hit subscribe and stay tuned so that you can find out. 
It's going to be a blast, I'm sure. If you're bored and if you're looking for things to do, check out Mexi's channel from the Voxel Box at the bottom left. He's been doing some interesting stuff recently. So I've been Stjin, and until next time, take care and, uh, and goodbye.